60 years ago, I offered my heart and my helmet to my Lord. My heart is still beating. My helmet still fits. I pray the divine coach finds me worthy to be on his first team. Welcome to the Hall of Fame, George Allen. It's yours. Player, coach, founder, come as you wish. We hail you as the all. George Hallis, the founding father of the National Football League. A Hall of Fame is a place that honors people that are exceptional at what they do. It exists to remind future generations of the greatness of these people from the past. Hebrews 11 tells us that faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. And I, I just never forget, uh, as a kid, uh, watching all the Super Bowl games and watching Monday Night Football, and my mom said, it's time to go to bed. But I said, no, Mom, I'm, I want to play pro football one day. And I never would have ever thought that uh, when my dad took me outside to kind of throw the ball around, that this ball would have taken me places. But I want to tell young students, the ball without education and without the proper mentoring is a disaster. Tyrone Keyes was born in Jackson, Mississippi. He attended Dawson Elementary School where his young life was impacted forever by his sixth grade teacher who taught him to dream big and believe in himself. As a football player, Tyrone Key's journey led him through SEC domination at Mississippi State and Super Bowl glory in the NFL. Yet through all of his triumphs and success, he never forgot about this woman, Mary Hagan. Key's sixth grade teacher. So when she came out uh, from LSU as a grad and talking to us about LSU and Southeastern Conference football and gave a chance for a kid like me to really, really dream. And On January 6, 1985, the Chicago Bears stood within reach of the Super Bowl for the first time. Their journey to San Francisco had been marked by challenges met. And in their wake, the Bears had left a trail of bruised opponents and broken records. But for Chicago, the final step from the NFC Championship game to Super Bowl 19 proved to be beyond reach. journey had ended in frustration. However, the true significance of the Bears' 1984 season lay in the great distance they had come and the hard-fought road upon which they had traveled. On October 31st, 1983, professional football bid farewell to its founding father. At the age of 88, George Stanley Hallis passed away. For over 60 years, Coach Hallis and the National Football League were one and the same. Hallis was one of the game's first players, and his many coaching innovations kept pro football moving forward. But it was Hallis's fiery spirit that sparked the Chicago Bears as no other team so clearly reflected the personality of its head coach. The Bears were the monsters of the Midway, and they wore their nickname like a badge of honor. In his 40 years as the Bears' head coach, Hallis taught some of the greatest players the game has ever known, and he won a record eight NFL championships. 
But more significantly, Papa Bear Hallis left his spirit in the game he loved. And he left his love in the men he touched. He's a very, very warm person. And uh, you can't help but like George Hallis. I love George Hallis. Today, the Chicago Bears against the Los Angeles Rams. It is a California afternoon at Anaheim Stadium. The Bears and the Los Angeles Rams. And the Rams talking title in the Western Division. As you can see, they are five and four. The Saints won this afternoon over Atlanta and moved to six and four. The 49ers still on top. In the Central Division, the Bears just trying to get better and hoping that maybe Minnesota will come back to them in that always scrambled Central Division. Hello, everyone. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here at Anaheim Stadium. And Johnny, this is a very special afternoon for the Chicago Bears and indeed an historic one. It certainly is, Tim. This is the first game the Chicago Bears have ever played without Papa Bear George Hallis, who died, as you know, earlier uh, this week at the age of 88. Coach Mike Ditka says he doesn't want to dedicate just this one game to Papa Bear, but the entire rest of the season. And he hopes that the team is going to play in the mold of the old George Hallis teams. His first decision today, he's going to start Jim McMahon at quarterback, so the quarterback derby is still on. <laughs> well, he kept that secret all week, made a big... And you can see uh, on the shoulder of the Bears today a special commemorative patch for George Stanley Hallis, the Papa Bear, who will certainly be missed throughout the National Football League, and what a mark he has left on the game of professional football. Ryan Osborne, McMichael for the injured Dan Hampton, rookie Tyrone Keyes in Harris's spot. <laughs> The 1983 Chicago Bears played with the kind of spirit and style that would have made Hallis proud. The Bears lost seven of their first ten games, but they never lost their heart. By winning five of its last six games, Chicago finished strong. The Chicago Bears, a team possessing a proud past as they move toward a promising future. Bear fans have long endured Chicago's bitter cold winter Sunday. The final game of the 1983 season was such a day. The winds off the lake, as well as memories of latter-day December duels with the Packers, increased the chill in Soldier Field. Play action, they keep dropped by McMahon. Going for it all, down the middle to go! Warmed by the electricity of an early score, the Chicago defense set out to put Packer playoff hopes in the deep free. The Bears iced Green Bay's offense with four sacks and seven turnovers. Offensively, Jim McMahon shrugged off the cold and the Packer defense running for one touchdown and passing for two more to give Chicago a 20 to 14 lead. Slot to the left. Yep. Two. No. A play action fake. There's a pass on the right side. Touchdown. Chicago Bears. The kid. Off pace. The quarterback for the end zone. They were sucking. Green Bay battled back and scored to go ahead late in the game. But with only 10 seconds remaining, Chicago still had one more chance. It all comes down to Bob Thomas. Chance for Bob to, to be a hero and end the season on a very high note. There's a snap. The ball is down. The kick is up. It's gone. Ten seconds to go. The Bears have taken a 23-21 lead over Green Bay. The 23 to 21 win gave the Bears five victories in their final six games as these boys of autumn had suddenly become the men of winter. Such triumphs will always rekindle fond memories of yesterday and of a man who is gone but will never be forgotten. 
George Hallis has not abandoned the Chicago Bears, for his spirit will forever be present in every member of the team he built, coached, and made legendary. The Chicago Bears, a team with a proud past and a promising future. For many of the plans in a man's heart, but it is the lowest purpose that prevails. Thank you all. God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the on and off field accomplishments of 2009 inductee Tyrone Keyes. You're under. Oh, okay. So since God has given us his hall of fame of people who have gone before us and had great faith despite hard times, let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. George Hallis leaves behind many memories and friends, but also an imperishable monument, the National Football League. As much as anybody, he is responsible for what millions of Americans do with their Monday nights and their Sunday afternoon. Hallis watched his game rise from small town rivalries to Super Sunday epics. His esteemed position in the NFL is further illuminated by the highest victory total in pro history. But that doesn't reflect, however, or the many lives he touched.